photo etch. You either like it, yeah, baby, yeah, or you hate it. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to like it, and it's all coming up right after this. Hello and welcome back to another 10 minute tips and techniques. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into that, and this into that. I'll be going over some simple photo etch bending that anyone can do, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll be back in a minute. So I thought uh, I'd give you a closer view here of some of the photo etch I've added to the 1200 scale hood that I'm working on right now. So all these parts here are photo etch pieces that were glued on after. These and all the portholes had to be drilled out. So the doors are separate and these little platforms are all separate. And as you can see here, they've been glued to the side of the hull. So the reason for photo etch, if you don't know, is just to enhance certain details like on the side of the ship here, the, hood, the actual name hood was missing. The plastic was pretty good overall. It, it emulated what's going on here fairly well. It's just some of the little details like this and the doors and that kind of thing were a little more vague. And I, this vent here, I, I think was in plastic as well. So the profile is just a little thinner in photo etch, as you can see there. So it just adds a little more realism. And then of course there's the handrails on the side, which add to the realism as well. Back in a minute and we'll get into bending this photo etch. So I thought I'd just show you before I get going on this video some of the tools that I tend to use most of the time and some of the time. If you're just starting out with photo etch I would suggest having just a few of these particular tools. First of all obviously you're gonna need some decent tweezers. If you don't have tools like this uh, you'll need a pair of tweezers, obviously a knife, uh, some sort of clamping, self-clamping pliers are good. Uh, a file, a blade like this comes in handy for bending photo etch. And if you can get one, this is just a china marker. It's basically what you see a lot of people marketing now as a photo etch picking up tool. It's just a wax crayon and you can see I'm able to pick up small pieces of photo etch like this quite easily and you'll be able to stick and place them and it releases quite easy once it hits the surface of the glue. So, uh, you know, Staples I think carries these. I'm not sure how much they are, I can't remember, but that's a handy tool to have as well. This is dental wax. I just break off a little chunk and stick it to a toothpick like this. And that too can be used as a pickup tool for photo etch. Now if you want to get into different tools, better tools, that will help you even more uh, once you get the basics down, you can get yourself a tool like this. It's called a photo etch break. I use this one quite a bit. It's called the Bug. It's made by the small shop. You can see off this big one here. I kind of like this one because it's an easy spin to, to go to any of these you know, long, if you're bending a piece of long photo etch here, you'll use this side or smaller pieces. Um, the other one, this one here is great if you've got long pieces. The only thing is you need to, uh, you have to take these right out and flip it around. So it's a little more inconvenient if, if you're using this one. Although you could have the long side turned here and do all your smaller photo etch with this. So these are kind of nice to have as a pair because you can, be more productive if you've got both of them but all you really need is one and basically all you're doing is taking your photo etch pieces and you're sticking it in the break like this so it just makes it a little more accurate to bending the pieces than using a pair of pliers so you're just sticking it under there breaking it down and then bending it up and I will show you that in the next part of the video here this is another tool you can use for bending grab handles you can see the wire goes through each end and you would bend the wire up this way. These Tamiya pliers are good for if you need to hold the photo etch like this and you usually have to sand off the burr once you cut the piece off the photo etch. So those are good for that and you can use them as a bending jig as well. You can see they come in two different sizes, a long flat style like this and a shorter tapered 
like that one. And then of course you need a blade of some kind to use in the brake itself to fold up the pieces, so that comes in handy. Some of these come with uh, plastic ones like this here that you would use again for bending up the photo etch, and those work pretty good as well. And then these are for making tubes and curved pieces, and you can see there's different tapers on the tool itself so you can bend the pieces around or you can use this to scribe into the photo etch or make an indent. Very interesting. These are some of the glues and applicators I use when I'm putting photo etch together. This is a thin super glue, it's like water. And this is a medium super glue, a little thicker for bigger pieces. This is the accelerator for setting the super glue instantly. I use a needle to dip into the thin super glue to apply to joints and it just seeps in sort of like, to me, a thin cement. I also use, it's like a photo etch piece you just cut out and it's a loop for applying super glue and it works pretty good too. I'll also use from time to time five minute epoxy as well and sometimes I'll even use 20 minute epoxy if I need something to be able to move for a bit before it sets in place. So I'm going to show you how to cut photo etch off a sheet here. Most photo etch these days comes with protective plastic top on it as well as another one underneath and the reason for that is when you're cutting your parts out they don't go flying. So I've got this black acrylic back here that makes it a little easier to see the photo etch uh, fret carriers so when you're cutting them it's a little more accurate where you're placing your knife so what you want to do is get in as close as you can I usually will drag the knife and you'll feel it hit the edge of the photo etch and just rock your knife like that as you cut it off same thing here slide it to the piece turn that around slide it over and there's your piece out and then same thing on all the pieces when you're cutting them. Slide it over, feel the edge, you'll hear the snap. You can use a regular X-Acto blade or a straight blade or a curved blade. It doesn't really matter what of your preferences. I use both sometimes. That's how you get the part off the carrier. So there's our parts. So the next thing you want to do, I like to do this anyway, just to ensure paint adhesion. This is a medium sanding stick, and then I have a fine sanding stick. And you just wanna take the piece, stick it on there, and this way, your photo etch won't move. So if you were wondering how the heck do I sand photo etch so it doesn't move around on me, it's like having a third hand. And you just sand that piece, flip it over, and do the other side. And then of course, if you have something bigger, you can just use a sheet of sandpaper like that and that'll hold that in place as well. So that just ensures with the primer that you're getting a good bond with the paint to the, to the metal. The next thing you want to do is grab your photo etch pliers or whatever it is that you've got to use as a holder. Get that piece in so it's almost hidden like that. So to get rid of the burrs on the photo etch, just like on your plastic parts, move to the next piece, get it in position, and sand that one off. As long as you hold it, nice and tight like that so the piece won't bend on you when you're filing it. So that's how you're gonna clean them off. Okay, I'm going to show you how to turn this and this into that and that. And I've got a few glues out. Uh, I'll explain what I have here. I've got my thin CA and I actually put it in a candle, like a tea candle, anything that is wax based. You can put your CA glue in that and it'll last a really long time and it won't go dry on you. Don't ask me about the science, I have no idea. Yes, science! It's an excellent little trick and this will stay fluid in there for a couple days before it dries out. And this is my accelerator and I keep that on. It's like a little brush end here. I just insert that into the spray bottle cap and then I apply that with this brush to the area I need to. And I've got my applicator loop. I have my flame over here for burning off the CA glue so it doesn't get too clogged up. So why don't we start with the stairs here. Make sure you get the right side with the detail. Then all you wanna do is just line it up on the marks. Make sure you have it exactly where you want it. And you just clamp that down. Take your razor or your bending implement and you wanna bend that up and bend it just slightly past. Cause then you can bend it back to a 90 degree. Loosen that off and then do the other side. 
really make sure you're on the bend line and then just bend that up. There we have our, our sides of our ladder bent up. For stairs, it's really neat the way they have these set up. All you do is get your tweezer underneath there and you just pop that up. And then there you have your little staircase. On the underside, so you don't see the glue, I just take some of my thin CA on this needle here. Then I just add a dab to each corner and that'll hold that stair in place. And there is the finished piece. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And the purpose of these fingers is uh, each one of them will fit different areas that you want to bend. Okay, so I've got that there. We'll bend it up. And a halfway. Now I want to take this piece and gently bend it under. Now I have the bottom half of this structure here. So I'm going to glue that and then I'll come back and show you how to bend the rest of the pieces up. Okay, let's bend the next pieces up here. So now I have two of those for the other side of the ship and two of these. A couple other things I forgot to mention. One way to prevent that something gets scratched or bumped, you can blacken the photo etch, which will be less noticeable when the part does get scratched or you know you might have missed painting something. The black in it just helps the brass from showing through the paint. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's take a little black in it. Just enough to fill the bottom of the tray. I've got a scrap piece of photo etch here. And what you want to do, I've already done this side over here, again, is sand that photo etch. That's what you want to do, give it a light sand, and then you just pop it into the tray. Make sure it's fully submerged. And we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like. So it's been a few minutes. I think our photo etch is ready. We'll just pop it out. And of course, to stop the activation process, you'd want to drop it in water. You can see, you know, this is going to look much better underneath a coat of paint. If it does scratch, it actually kind of looks rusty. It's kind of oxidized it a bit. And that's what you can do with the black in it. So that's another little trick you can use to ensure that that photo etch doesn't show up as a, a shiny brass piece underneath your paint. So the other thing I wanted to show you was bending your photo etch with these particular tools here. Instead of using a fancy brake, like I showed you earlier, you can just get yourself a pair of needle nose, smooth needle nose pliers. Don't get the, the ones that have grip on them because they could damage the photo etch. When you're bending with these guys, again, it's just like using a brake. You're gonna clamp that on the line that you wanna bend, and then you can use your finger even, and you can get yourself there's your 90 degree. See the only problem with these are the jaws don't line up. That's a bit of an issue. Uh, you'd have to try and straighten those somehow. So you know you might want to just spend the money on these. If you don't want to buy a brake, these are your next best option. So you just get in there with these. They're nice and straight. You know you're gonna get a good bend and there you go. You know you've got two nice 90 degree bends. So that's just another simple trick I wanted to show you uh, bending with pliers and these Tamiya photo etch benders. So that's it for this 10 minute tips and techniques. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you pulled something away from that. Maybe got a little bit of new information on how to do photo etch. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye now. That's all folks.